So Herc's going to face Bruno in one of Bruno's last matches, uh, at the Paul Bosch retirement show in Houston on August 28th. You're actually going to do commentary on that with Mike McGurk and Pete Doherty. Are you excited to, to be calling one of la- one of Bruno's last matches or was that not even something that was on your radar at the time? Uh, that's probably going to get a lot of heat with a lot of people, but then again, that's what I'm good at. I was never a Bruno fan. And the reason I say that is I had always heard about Bruno San Martino and all of the magazines portrayed Bruno as the greatest thing since sliced bread. I had never seen Bruno work until Bruno came and did a show with us in Houston in the summit, which was a big deal to go from the Sam Houston Coliseum to the brand new building, the new air conditioned summit. And Bruno worked with superstar Billy Graham. It was the most boring, non-action, nothing happening, blah match that I'd ever seen at the time. And I'd seen some pretty horrible blah matches. And all Bruno did was strongman stuff and punch and kick. There wasn't a whole lot to Bruno. And his promos, at least for, you know, Texas, we didn't get, you know, there was no hot issue or angle. It was just the appearance of Bruno San Martino, you know, New York's own Bruno San Martino, longest reigning WWF champion in history and all these things. Um, so to me, Bruno was like, okay, yeah, he was big in the Northeast, but I don't know that he ever drew anywhere else outside of the Northeast. I don't know that Bruno went anywhere else. You know, he did L.A., he did Detroit, he did St. Louis, um, some of those places, and did one-offs. Obviously went to Japan. But here's the thing. Bruno didn't need to go anywhere else. Right. Bruno was a big enough draw in the Northeast. Bruno could call his shots. So, you know, more power to him. I just, for me, it wasn't, it was almost... uh, laborious to do a Bruno match because I just, there was not a lot of action and you had to really put Bruno over, uh, overall, man. Yeah. I guess it's a thrill to be able to call a Bruno San Martino match and say that I got to do that. But as a fan, I wasn't, I wasn't a big fan of Bruno copy. So talk to me a little bit about, uh, 1988. They're going to start a program with Hercules Hernandez and the ultimate warrior. They have a tug of war over Herc's chain during a scheduled match and warrior breaks the chain and then Herc attacks him with it. And this leads to a, well, not so exciting match at WrestleMania four on March 27th. And then months of horrible house show matches in the summer of 88. Any memories of these train wrecks? I can't say it's all. Why are you calling them train wrecks and horrible matches? Okay. Uh, so they were good. My apologies to all the Warrior no, they fans. Were, they were horrible, man. They, they <laughs> just, it was god awful. Um, <laughs> it was a complete clash and kind of um, the drizzling shits. It was not good by any stretch of the imagination. And Herc, try as he, you know, really wanted to, you know, Warrior was not a great worker and didn't really wasn't able to change his style to work with other people. And it was two big, strong guys going up against each other with not a whole lot of action, doing strong man stuff that was clumsy and didn't come off very well. So yeah, they were horrible. SummerSlam 88 Madison square garden. We see Hercules pinned by Jake Roberts 